Welcome to my history perch on the 13th floor of Juno Village Towers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Chuck Wirth, born many, many years ago in Lebanon, Dodge County, Wisconsin. I've spent much of my life researching and sharing the history of my hometown. And as you can see from the photograph, I began when I was very, very young, lecturing and telling stories. These days, creating a series of short documentary videos about Lebanon's history has become my obsession. So let's travel north out of the village of New Lebanon on County Highway R to a bucolic recreation area. As we travel, we'll hear echoes of the Lebanon band performing its signature tune, March Jubiloso, by Earl King. <laughs> The young Lebanon Volunteer Fire Department, after only eight years of existence, in 1940 purchased 17 acres of land for $1,000. Lebanon Volunteer Firemen's Park was given birth. In its 80-year history, the park has undergone many changes and has experienced many improvements. The steadfast anchor in the park for 71 of those 80 years has been the band shell. The smell of the grease paint and the roar of the crowd takes us back to the late 1940s and through the 1960s. Those were the glory years for volunteer fire departments in small towns like Lebanon. The annual fireman's picnic was more than a fundraiser in support of the firefighters. It was a combination entertainment spectacular, community morale builder, and family reunion. The tradition of an annual picnic as a fundraiser for the Volunteer Fire Company goes back to the department's founding in 1932. From 1933 through 1940, picnics were held in Schliwies Woods on the south end of the village of New Lebanon, southeast of St. Peter's Church. In 1936, when the Lebanon Fire Department was only four years old, they decided to bid for the privilege of hosting the annual Dodge County Firemen's Association Tournament. However, their bid to host the tournament was rejected because Lebanon lacked the necessary park and infrastructure for such a large event. The rejection spurred the young department into action. At only 10 years old, the Lebanon department boasted 95 active members and they were dominating the annual tournament competitions. Now with their own park and some primitive infrastructure they bid for and were awarded the 1943 tournament. The 1943 Dodge County Firemen's Association tournament was the first to be hosted in Lebanon. Tents and temporary buildings, including a prefab stage, were pressed into action. Even in the midst of World War II, the 1943 Firemen's Tournament in Lebanon was a smashing success. Proceeds from the 1943 tournament provided a huge financial boost to the fire department. 
the department implemented a very aggressive long-range expansion plan. Priority one was equipment. In 1947 the department bought its first new engine to complement the two second-hand trucks already in service. Determined to make the Lebanon Fireman's Park into a model of efficiency and quality that would bring future tournaments to Lebanon, the department set about an ambitious building campaign. Permanent beer and concession stands were constructed. The Bandshell, considered the finest in Dodge County at that time, was built in 1949. In 1951 the baseball diamond was added and in 1954 the dining hall and kitchen were built. The modernized department and impressive park got the attention of the Dodge County Firemen's Association. Lebanon played host to the 1957 tournament, probably the largest and most ambitious event ever staged at Lebanon Firemen's Park. The Watertown Daily Times boasted Lebanon to host County Firemen Sunday. Tournament program includes parade, dinner, entertainment. Firemen's Park, Lebanon will be the scene of the annual Dodge County Firemen's Tournament to be held on Saturday and Sunday, August 3rd and 4th, with the Lebanon Volunteer Fire Department as hosts. The tournament will feature a gala parade beginning at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday. More than 1,200 firemen will take part in the parade. Brosh Brothers Amusements and Concessions will be on the grounds both Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday there will be a ball game, Ashapon vs. Lebanon, Rock River League, beginning at 2 p.m. In the evening there will be wrestling featuring Gypsy Joe. A chicken and ham dinner will be served from parade time until 2 p.m. and from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday. A championship water fight will be held at 7 p.m. on Sunday. Lebanon is now the Dodge County champion. Free parking space will be available as well as bus service from the village to the park from 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday. Temporary electrical lines were added to support the carnival rides, which included a large Ferris wheel, merry-go-round, and carnival concession stands. A gypsy fortune teller was among the unique attractions that year. Long forgotten in these days of less frenetic Lebanon picnics are the dressing rooms in the basement of the bandshell at Fireman's Park and the cast of characters who applied grease paint and garish costumes to perform on the boards of the Lebanon Bandshell. Built in 1949 for the growing Lebanon Band, the Bandshell's designer created an ideal acoustic environment for highlighting the exquisite musicianship of the mid-century Lebanon Band. The designer also sought to accommodate other entertainment options for the annual Lebanon Firemen's Picnic. For example, vaudeville troops and pop music groups. The apron that extends beyond the proscenium is deep enough to accommodate the antics of acrobats, unicycle riders, burlesque dancers, dog acts, and square dancers. The proscenium is high enough to permit setting up the framework on the apron necessary for trapeze acts and tightrope walkers. The stage of the Fireman's Park Bandshell featured all these types of entertainment at one time or another. 
The space below the stage accommodates several game stalls still used today. The rooms that now provide storage for the band's folding chairs and music stands were designed as dressing rooms for entertainers featured at the annual Fireman's Picnic. When the band shell stage was not occupied by the Lebanon Band or the Lebanon Accordion Band, a variety of entertainers performed inside and outside the proscenium arch. The Aerotikes and Daddy, trapeze artists. The Cycling Martins, unicycle riders. Stone Sisters, acrobats and jugglers. The Marlene Sisters, TV singing and comedy stars. The Gordons, a troupe of acrobats and comedians. The Whirlaway Squares, with callers Will Federer and Dick Rose, square dance troupe, very popular. Wrestlers. Professional wrestlers like Gypsy Joe, Dick the Bruiser, and The Crusher used the dressing rooms as they prepared for wrestling matches, a Saturday night favorite on the temporary ring constructed in front of the band shell. Gypsy Joe was a perennial favorite. Challenge matches involving Lebanon locals going up against the pros were a particular highlight. Sunday night was the biggest draw. Entertainers on the band shell stage from 6 to 8. The Lebanon band performing from 8 to 10. But it was not unusual for the Lebanon band to perform long past 10 p.m. The Blatt's beer stand north of the band shell also featured more, than li more live entertainment. The Dizzy Sizzlers might be performing at Blatt's or Jolly Chali. Closing the beer stands before 1 a.m. was unheard of. The annual Lebanon Fireman's Picnic gives us a panoramic view of the culture in Lebanon in the mid-20th century. However, not everything about the era was upbeat. On stage, the Gold Dust Twins were a repeating show for several years. They were a popular comedy act, mixing music and comedy, and this was very popular in the Midwest during the 1950s. The two black men sang, danced, and performed banjo music, as well as providing three rounds of boxing. There was a white referee for the boxing performance. The Gold Dust Twins represent a genre of black entertainment intended to counter the minstrel show stereotypes that portrayed black identity as laughable, primitive, and overly sensual. Unfortunately, the subtlety of the Gold Dust Twins' attempts to expose racist stereotypes was lost on rural Wisconsin audiences. Their performances in small towns stoked rather than corrected the prejudices in the white audiences. Troops like the Gold Dust Twins disappeared by the 1960s. Finally, there were the burlesque performances, like the Red Garter Gals. Provocatively clad females were featured in chorus and solo dances, plus body slapstick skits and songs. These shows were quite popular among the men of Lebanon. Not all the ladies of Lebanon agreed. So burlesque shows appear to have been quite short-lived in the panoply of performers who graced the stage 
of the Fireman's Park Bandshell. All is quiet now in those forgotten rooms under the bandshell. The Lebanon band continues to concertize on the stage. But no out-of-town entertainers tread the boards any longer. Gone are the crowds and the grease paint. Gone also is some of the social glue that held the community together in those years.